Hello and welcome to Cisco Content Security Knowledge Base. Today we're going to talk about installing Splunk on a Linux server. Uh, first things first, you're going to need to get your user manuals and installation guides off of the support portal for our application and then also off of the uh, Splunk website for their actual server software. So after you've reviewed that documentation and had the appropriate hardware and uh, met all the requ all the minimum requirements for Splunk, then we're going to need to go ahead and start installing the Splunk software. So in order to download that, you're going to go to Splunk.com, and you're going to click on Free Download. And on the Free Download page, you're going to go under the uh, Linux distribution 64-bit. You can download either the TarGZ or the RPM file. Um, I chose the TarGZ for this example, but you can use either. There are commands for both to be able to do the install. Uh, for the RPM install, this is the command, and then for the targz file, this is the command for that one as well. And again, these are both both available in the install guide, so just please review that whenever you go through to do your own install. So after you've downloaded the Splunk software, we're going to need to go ahead and go through the install. By default, my Firefox downloads the file to a downloads folder, so you're going to need to move the file to the directory where you're going to want to install it. Um, by default, we normally uh, go with opt and then it'll create a subdirectory Splunk. If you'd like to create a new volume and do it your own path, then just update the path accordingly and move the file to there. Once you have the file in place, for the tar, you're going to use the tar minus XVF and then the file name, and it's going to extract all the all the data out of that file into the same into the new directory. Now that all the data has been extracted, we can do a list on the directory and we'll see that there's a new directory there. So at this next point we're going to run through the install to actually start the application. So in order to do that, you're going to use the full path, so it's opt, splunk, bin, splunk. And you're going to use start to start the application and then because of the first time whenever you first install it you're going to have to accept the license agreement if you'd like to do that all in one step just do dash dash accept dash license and that'll accept it when you go through Now, as you can see, after it completes, it tells you, what, tells you you can go to the Splunk web interface based on the host name of the client machine that you installed it on and the port. And you, it'll give you a hyperlink here that you can click on. So we're going to copy that, put it in our web browser, and go to there. And it's going to take you to the login. For the first time logging in, it pops up and tells you what you're going to log in with. So it's going to be admin password is change me it's going to ask you for a new password set it to whatever you'd like so next we're going to have to go through and install our license we're going to go into settings and go down to licensing and from here we're going to go ahead and add a license. By default you get the 30-day license. Um, you're going to add whatever license you purchased from the um, from your Cisco account manager or your vendor. You can do this one of two ways. You can either paste it in the XML or you can actually just browse to a file if you have a file saved somewhere. Just make sure there's no additional spaces or anything in the license key whenever you paste it in there and then click install. It'll tell you that it's successful and you're going to have to restart the server. So go ahead and click on the restart and it'll run through and make sure that you want to restart the server. While it's restarting, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Now that your server is reset, we're going to go in and we're going to install the application. So we're going to go down here, click on apps and go to manage apps. From there we're going to install the app from a file. And then you just use the browse utility to find your file. So for, my, for me, I installed it, I downloaded it to my admin downloads folder, 
and click that one, just click open. You'll see that file pull up here. And just click upload. Now you're going to have to restart Splunk again. While it restarts, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video as well. Now that our application's had time to restart, we're going to go ahead and log back in. Once we're logged in, we're going to go back into the Manage Apps. Now we should see our Splunk for Cisco Ironport WSA installed already. So now that we have our app installed and everything's ready, now we need to create a folder structure on our, on our Splunk server to be able to have the access logs pushed over from the WSA. So in order to get the historical ones, we're going to have to download the historical ones first. Um, what I've done is I've created a folder under my op Splunk directory for WSA logs. And I've already downloaded them via FTP from the from the WSA over to my Splunk server. So now that I have the historical historical log data under the folder structure, we can go ahead and create our data input. So you're going to go from settings to data inputs. We're going to add. We're going to click on file and directories, and we're going to click on new to add a new input. We're going to go ahead and skip the preview. Click continue. going to continuously index data from a file or directory the Splunk instance, instance can access. And you're going to put out the, the path to where you stored your WSA logs. For me, it's under Home, Admin, WSA Logs. We're going to click on More, se more Settings. Under the More Settings options, we're going to change the host field to actually be the name of the WSA that we have set up. So mine is wsa.mhotkey.com. Under set the source type, we're going to choose manual. And under the source type, we're going to do wsa underscore access logs. From there, we're going to leave the destination index is going to be the default. And you leave the whitelist, all the advanced options alone, and we're going to save. Now we can see our home admin WSA logs has been created. It shows the total number of files in the directory. We should be good to go on that part. Now that we have the data input configured, we want to go ahead and import our historical data into the Splunk database. To run the summary VBS script, you're going to navigate back. To, you're going to go back to your terminal session. You're going to go to the Splunk home directory, and you're going to run slash op slash Splunk slash etc apps. Splunk for Cisco Ironport WSA bin and then summary.sh From here you're going to enter the directory to where you have Splunk installed so op Splunk is where I have mine installed and then you're going to log in with your Splunk username And from here it's going to run through and while this is running I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And as you can see right now our summary script is still running and it's parsing through all the all the old data that we have and loading that into the database. Um, this data will start to populate as this after the summary script is completed and uh, will require a restart of the Splunk process so to do that you'll just go into the administrative settings and restart the restart the process. Um, in the meantime, what we're going to do is go through the process of setting up your WSA to push the logs to the to the Splunk server from now on so that you don't have to go back in and manually import the files. So in order to do that, um, if you're going to use the same data input, then all we're going to have to do is just set up the WSA to push to that same directory. If you'd like to use a separate data input versus the historical data, then we'll need to create a new data input. So we're going to go based off of using the same data input that you used for the historical data. So what you're going to do is go into your WSA GUI, System Administration Log Subscriptions, and you're going to go through and you're going to add a log subscription. From here you're going to use the drop down menu to select access logs. You're going to give it a name. Um, Splunk Logs is probably about the most common. From here you can either do a rollover by time or you can do a rollover by size. Um, 
default is 100 megs. Uh, you can do a daily rollover if you want to do that to keep your keep your um, data indexing size down low. So you'd set up daily rollover and set your time. Uh, if you wanted 2 a.m., it'd be 0200. Any custom field you want to add to the reference, you can add there as well. And then from there, you'll use FTP on remote server or SCP, uh, depending on which uh, which type of server you have enabled on your Splunk server. From there, you'll put in the host name or the IP address of your Splunk server. So in my case, it's 192.168.1.24. And then you'll put the path, the directory, to where you're actually going to save the files. On mine, it was slash home admin WSA logs. And then from there, you're just going to put in your username and your username and password to log into the server. Submit, commit your changes, and every day at 2 a.m., the log file will roll over. At that point, there's nothing else that you have to do on the Splunk server or the WSA. So as the as the new logs come in, they'll be indexed into the database and then wiped out. And then from there, it'll automatically populate into your GUI. Uh, this has been a video knowledge base article based on Splunk installing on Linux. Thank you for your participation and uh, feel free to ask us any questions on the support forums or on uh, TechZone or opening a support case. Thank you very much.